So I pretty much have the imagining thing down. <laughs> I've been practicing it for many, many years. And I've come to really trust my ability to have an idea come sooner or later. Sometimes it's later. But I've just kind of noticed how predictable and how trustworthy I found that that's, that ability is for me to be able to see something that maybe hasn't existed before. Now, right alongside that is also the bit of imagination that allows me to see how ideas might go, go astray. And this is a challenge, you know, to put upside the, the creativity of imagining with that part that says, oh, no, wait, that part's not going to work out very well, or oh, danger, 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 or oh, who's going to think what they're about, that, that idea, about that idea, oh. So right alongside that. And here's what happens. We'll be in worship planning team. Someone will bring up an idea. And I try to be, I, I'm really pretty positive about this. Mark, I'm a little bit too hot. Can you turn me down a little bit? Thanks. Um, so we'll be in worship planning, and someone will float an idea, and I will be doing both of those things, imagining the possibilities in the idea, and also just seeing how it might play out. And I'm sure for a moment, because they've told me, I'll have this kind of blank expression on my face, which they find hard to read. So you know how it is when someone puts out an idea, you kind of hope they'll, they'll go, ah! and you know, I'm just having my own inner moment with my relaxed face, which they think is probably judgment of some sort, um, and hopefully it's not. But there are two parts to this imagination process, aren't there? There's the ability to imagine things we've not seen before and how powerful and exciting and fun that is, and then to imagine the next steps. Both of those things are important. But today, I just want us to hang out in that space where we get to imagine that park however it might be. And maybe that's heaven on earth. Now, we led, led, uh, read a little bit from Revelation. And you know this book of Revelation, the last book in the Bible, crazy book, just off the charts, crazy book. No doubt about it. You don't have to read very far to get crazy stuff. In the first service, when we did this imagination thing, we imagined a dinosaur. Or not a dinosaur. What did we? A dragon. A dragon. We imagined a dragon. You know, and it's not very far into the book of Revelation until you're getting, you get this whole scene where there are these four beings, and they've got six wings, and one of them kind of looks like a lion, one of them looks like this, and they've got eyes all over them. This is in the Bible, folks. <laughs> Crazy book. And some people have taken the crazy part and made it even crazier. And yet what I see is room to imagine. In this, in this part that we read this morning, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. God is creating a new heaven and a new earth. If that doesn't create the possibility of new things happening, new and exciting things happening, what doesn't? And closer to the end, it says again, I am making all things new. So this is part of God's plan, to be making things new. That it isn't always out as it, as it has been, it's also how it might be. And I don't know about you, but I look around in the world, and in my own life, quite frankly, and I can see places where I or my community or my friends or my nation or my world could be someplace else, at least according to my humble opinion. I can imagine new things for my own life. I can imagine new things for the lives of the people that I love. I can imagine new things for our country, for our communities. I can imagine new things for our world, we can see, we can see, and there's a particular power, I think, when we can see together. I'm working on this idea, this idea for social action. It's called getting on the same page. So 
my thought is that, you know, lots of times when we talk about things that are going on in the world, we talk about them fairly generally. We'll talk about climate change, or we'll talk about racism, or we'll talk about one thing or another, and we, we're kind of general about it. But I think part of our job is to figure out, to get an idea of what it is that we see that might be possible together, and to see that picture together so that we're on the same page. And being on the same page, I believe, will help us take the steps we need to take to make things happen. And I believe in the mystical power of getting on the same page. I just think that once we get lined up, whether it's lining ourselves up with God's intention for us personally or as a community or in wider circles, that just that act alone makes things happen. But it also just gives us the clarity to move forward. If we all kind of know, okay, here's where we're going, then we can take the steps we need in order to move forward. I look around in the world and I see places where I just feel like there needs to be such important dreaming happening. And it's only only it's the sorts of things that we can, can accomplish or, or, or change if we dream together. And I'm going to talk just briefly about three things. And these are higher order ones. I want you to know that I think that this process of, of dreaming can be quite personal, or it can be quite close in for the people that we care about and love the most, the ones who are right here in our circle or that those circles might get wider. But these are some things that I think, unless we dream together and get on the same page, they will continue to be intractable. The first one is climate change. I have heard almost no conversation about the issue of climate change in the current uh, election conversation. Has anybody else? At least not very much. And in my opinion, that should be at the top of a list. Partly because deep down, everyone knows we're in trouble, even if they won't admit it. And that's creating a level of anxiety, I believe, across the board that's playing out in other ways in our community life. We need to be able to see a new future. We need to be able to see how we can change the way that we're living in some ways, some, in some fairly radical ways in order to address the challenge and the threat of the environment uh, moving to a place that is, is where it's impossible for us to survive and that we will find as time goes on and things get worse that more and more people will be affected and that's going to change world politics, our national politics. So unless we dream together in this time where we're no longer dependent on carbon, unless we dream together, we will not be able to get to where we need to go. We need to lift up our individual voices and our collective voices. And that, of course, is at least partially related to the second one, which is our political system. And at the moment, things just seem to be at loggerheads. We seem to be divided in a way that makes it impossible for us to have conversation or debate or compromise, which is becoming a dirty word. And yet it is only when we dream together, it's only when we really gather the best of the wisdom from all sides to find the solutions that we need. Sometimes I feel like these issues that I'm looking at bring me right to the edge of my own sense of personal hope. It's like I can hardly be hopeful. It's, just, it's hard, I have to admit, it's hard for me to be hopeful. And yet I know it's that at that point that I need to rely on God's hope and not just, not just my own. And that I need 
the wisdom of the community and the support of the community and being on the same page in order to move forward. That seems like a really big challenge at the moment in our current political situa uh, situation. In some ways, I feel like we might luck be lucky just to prevail. But that is just a short-term strategy. It's not a long-term strategy for creating God's heaven on earth. And the third one that I would name is racism. The conversation, I, I feel like we're at a place, a, a really lively and a, a place of, full of possibility right now in terms of the sorts of things that are happening in our culture, the things that are bring, being brought up and forward. And yet each of those individual actions and collective actions that are happening have the chance of being pushed off course for the wrong reasons that we lose track of the basic questions about justice and equality and, and creating space and opportunity for all people. We need this larger sense of being together, of, of knowing that we have to address this as a group body and not just as individuals. We need to dream together about how we can move forward. I was talking to someone between the services and she shared this excellent insight that the book of Revelation was actually addressing the political and social situation of the time. This wild and crazy language was a way of imagining, a way out of the, of the violence and the oppression that was happening to the people at that time in that place. Not really all that much different than some of the circumstances that we're in today. The challenge for many of us is that even as things seem to be going off track in the big sense that we can be living lives that are, are full, that are hopeful, that are meaningful, that have love and support in them, all of those things are true, which in some ways makes it even harder for us to dream together unless we feel the urgency or even just the intense desire for finding God's heaven on earth. The book of Revelation is about dreaming. It's about things that we can see, sometimes out of the ordinary, sometimes amazing and incredible. But isn't that what we need at this point? We need some dreams that are wild and incredible and that will push us forward. You know, there is the thing of dreaming and then what do you do next? But for a moment, if we can just see the world the way we would like it to be for ourselves, for the people we love, for our communities, for our nation, and for the world. Amen.